If you want to build a receiver for casual listening, don't build this circuit. The simplest type of receiver you can build for the upper HF, lower VHF range is a super regenerative type. The main limitations are its limited modes that it can receive. AM and wideband FM. You can receive narrowband FM on them, but it's a bit of a struggle. QST published a receiver design by Charles Kitchen N1TEV. That could receive not only AM and wideband FM, but also narrowband FM and even SSB. It did that by introducing two controls you normally don't see in a super regen receiver. A regen control and a crinch waveform adjustment. They changed the operating characteristics of the receiver to allow reception of narrowband FM and even SSB, although there are some limitations. My receiver partly borrows from this design. Another receiver, much simpler, appears on the Talking Electronics website. That's a simple 27 MHz Super Regen receiver. I'll include a link to both that and the QST article in the description for this video. My receiver is a hybrid of those two designs. Here's the receiver part comprising just one transistor. From left to right, the vernier dial, a spacer that provides some mechanical and electrical isolation between the vernier drive and the variable capacitor. The variable capacitor you see here goes from 5 up to about 30 picofarads. If you don't have one of these, you could consider a trimmer capacitor, especially if you are only going to be building this receiver for one frequency. Then there's the coil, the only coil you need to wind. It's 11 turns of enameled copper wire, like from an old transformer. It's about 4 millimeters in diameter, and there's a ferrite slug that screws in so you can adjust the inductance. Then there's just a few resistors and capacitors, an RF choke here, 22 microhenry, and I'll give you a close-up of the inductor. As for the other controls, this controls the operating voltage of the collector. If you cut the voltage too low, then it becomes only a regen receiver. And if it's even lower, then it doesn't even do that. And here is the crinch adjust characteristic control, and this is the volume control. The article in QST suggests using a either a 10 turn pot or a reduction drive for some of the finer adjustments and you will do that if you're building this as a serious receiver which this is definitely not. On the right is an LM386 audio amplifier. I've just used a business card to insulate it from the metal case. Anyway it's very basic design, hundreds of them on the web and I've just got a capacitor between pins 1 and 8 to give it a higher gain that is needed. What you're now looking at is the circuit. Just uses a basic NPN type transistor. A 2 in 3904 would work. I've used a BC548. The signal from the antenna is coupled to the collector via a 4.7 picofarad capacitor. If you find the coupling for that is too tight, like there might be a bit of detuning of the frequency if you connect a different antenna, then you could try tapping off on the inductor instead. Or you could reduce the value of the 4.7 picofarad to even smaller. Another thing you could do is make a little primary winding of maybe one or two turns 
over the middle of the slug tuned coil. This is a close up of part of the circuit around the emitter. The coil there is a 22 microhenry RF choke. Its value is not particularly critical. I tried 100 microhenry and it worked as well. The capacitor values are fairly critical. If they are a different value then the receiver may not oscillate or it may tune a different frequency. The capacitors I'm talking about are the 82 picofarad from the emitter to ground and the 39 picofarad from collector to emitter. That's the coil there, I've marked it as L1. Details are just up here. The original circuit had a capacitor across L1. That was a fixed capacitor and that's because it was a fixed frequency receiver with the alignment done by screwing the slug in and out for L1. Because I wanted to have one part of the variable capacitor grounded because that's a bit easier for construction I just connected it from the collector to the ground instead. The reason why I could do that is if you look at the top part of L1 although it's part of the circuit where there'll be audio RF is shunted to earth via the 100 nanofarad capacitor so it doesn't matter whether the bottom side of the 5 to 30 picofarad variable capacitor is connected either to the top of L1 or to earth. That capacitor is probably the hardest part of the receiver to buy. All the other parts are fairly common. Now the circuitry you see here, basically the power supply comes through the 3.3k resistor with the 10k potentiometer allowing you to vary its voltage and there's some isolation provided by the 47k resistor and the 100 nanofarad and the 1 nanofarad there just shunting any RF to earth. The audio is taken out of there and put into the volume control and then straight through to your standard LM386 audio amplifier. So that's a quick description of the receiver. Basically taken from N1TEV's design and the talking electronic circuit. I've used the potentiometers as per N1TEV and the bipolar transistor as per talking electronics. I haven't got a RF preamp in this circuit, unlike the QST design. I'm not sure why you'd actually build something like this in 2021 because VHF low band is pretty much deserted. 27 megahertz CB has pretty much gone, apart from a little bit of occasional activity. 28 megahertz is generally a fairly quiet band for amateurs, except in the middle of summer or during a contest. And commercial services have pretty much departed everything below 100 megahertz. And that goes for TV as well. No TV stations here in Australia below about 170 megahertz. So it's pretty much just a novelty these days. You'd build it just to get the idea of building a receiver. You might not expect to hear very much on it. I'll do a demonstration with this 27 megahertz AM walkie talkie. That's on 27 145 megahertz. And as you can hear from the hiss, it's also a super regen receiver. a little bit more. There's a bit of backlash on here because I haven't anchored the board that the variable capacitor is connected to. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And if you vary the voltage that 
is being applied to the BC548 collector. Um, you can hear the amount of hiss changes a bit. Also detunes it a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. 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 Down here is the control, the variable resistor in the emitter. I'll just uh, move that up a bit. One, two, three, four, five. 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 There's a bit of interaction between the controls. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, that's uh, probably about the loudest uh, position here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. There's quite a bit of interaction between the controls. I think it's probably best if you do build a receiver with several controls because a lot of super regen receivers, in fact most of them, don't have any type of adjustment at all. And often they work, but I think it's sometimes you might find that the operating point of various connections is better where you can vary voltages and uh, all that sort of thing. So. Um, it's probably better if you want to optimise things that you have the several controls like this set does. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This is transmitting in the 10 metre band of 28 megahertz. A bit more power from the FT817, so the signal is a bit stronger. One, two, three, four, five. This is on AM. Now this is narrow FM, narrow FM, there's less audio coming out, but if we fiddle around with some of the controls, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, the uh, emitter resistor um, going to ground the potentiometer, that makes a big difference with narrow band FM, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, this is the receiver quite adequately resolving narrow band FM. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Now I will just turn the potentiometer that's controlling the supply rail back and there's not quite as much hissing but it is oscillating. And so That wasn't very conclusive, as the signal I was applying was way too strong. Unlike a direct conversion receiver or a superhet that has a good dynamic range, a receiver like this is overloaded very easily on strong signals. So if it is going to be receiving SSB, it would only be hearing signals that are quite weak. Or at least not within your own shack. I was tuning across 27 megahertz and there is some activity on channel 38, 27385. So what you'll hear next is a demonstration of what this receiver sounds like. And I'm not saying it's any good. All I'll say is that it does resolve SSB. Thank <laughs> you.